Hey guys, so I couldn't find my Zoom recording, so I'm going to jump on here right now and show you how to quickly uh, texture that ball with the texture maps. Um, so I've already gone down and switched my settings to inches, uh, and I am just going to add this like this. So you want to make sure that your all of your images that you're using for your textures are in your source image folder. I'm just in my PBR fun folder right now that I've already set my project up for. And if I go in here, I have all these textures, which then have all their separate maps that I've gotten that I've downloaded. Um, this is immediately where Maya will start to look is wherever you have set your project. So you want to make sure that they are in there. All right, um, you can keep that open we'll be referencing it as we go. So go ahead and drop a polysphere and then press R to scale up and go ahead and scale that up and W to move it up above your uh, grid line. Okay, so when you start applying the textures to this, I want you to go ahead and hold your right click, go down to assign a new material, and instead of choosing one of these older shaders, uh, we're going to go into our Arnold shader and come down to the AI standard surface. Alrighty, so it doesn't look like it's changed much. That's okay. So, over here in your base color, if you go into one of where the texture maps are, bring this over a little bit, um, we have a base color, an ambient inclusion, height, normals, opacity, and roughness for this texture, which should, should look something like this when it's done. And um, so, we're here in base, and there's color. So all we need to do is come over to this little checkerboard, click that, and go ahead and click file, and now we'll bring you to this menu. There's a, the image name, and then over here is a little folder. If we click that, this should automatically come into your image source folder. If it doesn't, you might have set up your project wrong. So go ahead and check that. I'm going to go into this wood wicker, because that's the one we're working with. It's the one we did in class. And I'm going to go ahead and go to base color. So it looks like this. Uh, our opacity is going to knock out the background, so we can just see the weave. And I'm going to go ahead and click open. Okay, so we can't see anything on our sphere, nothing has changed. You need to go into textured or rendered mode and go ahead and press 6. Now your ball will change to having the texture on there. Um, so if we look at this texture, if you look really close, if I get in here, um, this is more ovular as our example or our maps are more circular, hexagonal, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we need to change that. We need to get it so it's not so stretched out. Um, and since this is a simple shape, we can go in and UV repeat. So this is the same thing if you have a plane and uh, your rocks or whatever are looking way too big. If it's a seamless texture, your repeating should work just fine. So I'm going to come over here to this repeating UV and start going up by uh, 0.5 to see if I can get better. So 1.5. It's looking a little better, but still stretched out, stretched out, too. I think that looks a lot better. I don't see much stretching this way. Um, I'm guessing if I went 1.5, uh, that way it would change as well. So whatever your texture is that you're working with, go ahead and uh, get your repeating. You will want to remember this, because we need every single map, all of these maps, when we plug them in to have the same UV repeating or else it won't work. So if I go in and put the opacity in but I haven't done this, it's going to still knock out what it looked at at 1. Okay. So. Alright. Now, uh, I only got these two tabs up here again. Um, I can't get back to where I could set all my colors in. Uh, if we go up Right over here, there is this button, and this will take us back a node, back again, and uh, to our standard surface one. I'm going to go ahead and name this Woven Sphere. Let me spell. Let me 
the sphere. And then I need to go and uh, set my next maps. So the next map that you would normally set is metalness. If you have a metalness map, that would be dropped in here just the same as we just did, but we don't have one of those maps, so we don't need to worry about it. Uh, what we do have is we have a roughness map, and that is going to be dropped down into the specularity roughness. Uh, this roughness has to deal with the metalness, so we this one will determine how much gloss or shine it is. So we're going to go down to roughness and go ahead and drop your file in again. And go ahead and pick it, and down to roughness, go ahead and open that up, and go back over here to your uh, Place 2D texture, and we are setting that same to 2. So you can see a little bit on our model, if I go back to 1, if you watch right here, you can see where this is gapping, and so it's 2. And now it is on our weavers. Okay, I'm going to hit back again, back again, so we can get back to this. What maps do we got left? So we have our ambient occlusion, our height, which is also our displacement, our and our normal, and our opacity left. Um, so next I'm going to do my normal map. You guys can do this in any way that you want, um, but I'm going to do it this way, and then we're going to go into the hyper shade to do the rest. So uh, here in geometry, Normals have replaced bump mapping as they used to be black and white uh, or gray or something thereof. Uh, they now include light, so they're in an RGB setting. So um, this is our bump mapping. Normals have replaced bump mapping. So we're going to go in and hit that checkerboard. Go ahead and select your file again. Now this has changed where it doesn't say just file name. It says bump value, and this appears to be already connected. We're going to go ahead and hit that, and that's where that file name is located. Go ahead and hit your folder, and go down to normals, or bump map, whatever you have, and go ahead and slap that in there. Again, you're going to have to, you'll be able to see this change a little bit more. Uh, go into your 2D place texture, and go ahead and hit your settings. So there it has changed. I'm going to go ahead and hit back and back. Now we're back in this section, and if you did just have a bump map, the use as bump is perfectly fine, but we have a normals map, so we're going to go ahead and hit this drop down and go to tangent space normals, and now this is looking a lot more, the light is affecting a lot more inside, and it's not um, weirdly outlined instead. Okay, go ahead and hit back. Alrighty, so for our opacity, you can also drop the opacity in here. Uh, go ahead and hit the little board, go to file, file name, opacity, and open that up. Again, you have to go to your repeating and set in your settings. Okay. So this right now doesn't look uh, see-through, but if we were to go to Arnold, drop in a sky dome, open up the Arnold render view, bring this over so you guys can see, and hit play, it's all see-through now. Okay. Um, so you could stop there, it's good enough to get your texture across, but we're going to go ahead and place the rest of our maps, and we're going to go and do that in the hyper shade. So you can get the hyper shade button by this little, uh, kind of looks like a desk camera, but we can also go up to Windows, Render Editors, and the Hypershade, just like we get to our Render Settings and our Light Editor. Go ahead and open that. And so when we open this, nothing exactly pops up in uh, our space area. Um, we have to select it. So I have my woven spear up here. And go ahead and select that, and still nothing is showing up in the Create Node tab. You're going to come up here to this double arrow guy, and go ahead and click that. And now all of these menus start to pop up. I am going to go through and blow this up for a second. I'm going to go through and uh, move these around just so that they are 
better aligned. Um, we can move around in this space with the pan just like we do the 2D view or the uh, non-perspective view like the front and the side with holding our alt key and our middle mouse button. All right, now I'm just going to move these around. I'm just going to surround select them so it selects the whole area and move them. So, what maps do we got left? We have our height or our displacement, um, and we have our ambient occlusion left. I'm going to go ahead and grab this height or displacement map and go ahead and drag that in. So if you notice, each one of these are our old maps. It has this node, the 2D placement texture, everything that's being controlled, we go ahead and click on this, double click on it, uh, it'll bring all of the wires that it's connecting to, everything that is affecting this uh, map, this 2D map. Uh, go ahead and close that. Next you have the color, the texture map 2D layer that is being placed. Uh, it also has its own things that are coming in and one that is going out. And that is where we are connecting our uh, into our object that we are affecting to our material node. And then we have over here is our final. All of these influence this, which tells this what to do, and then it outputs to towards our object. So if we look through here, this is going into base color, specularity, roughness, opacity, and normals, but we don't see one that says height and or displacement. But if we look over here, there's a displacement shader. So we're just going to go ahead to this out color, just like it is connected with all the others, um, besides that one, but the out of whatever object, and we're going to go ahead and hit that out color, and it brings us this wire, and we're just going to plug it in. So now all we have left is ambient occlusion. Um, we're going to do the same thing and drop this in. Ambient occlusion is going to stick around with um, our base color map. So I'm going to just drop this in right below just so I'm a little bit more organized and surround select them and bring them out. Okay. So this also needs to go into our base color. We can only have one wire out and we need these two to talk to each other. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this 2D place texture node, go ahead and delete that. And we need this node to affect both of these colors. So we're gonna go ahead and hit control and middle mouse. And if you're on a PC, this is going to change to a little plus button. If you are on the Mac, it is going to give this 2D placement texture node a little box below my mouse. And I'm just going to drag and drop, holding my, uh, control and middle mouse button into this area where these are connected. And that will connect it out. Okay. So that's good. This node is affecting both of these. That's what we want. Um, but both of these need to be plugged into the same place and we still can't we can't plug two in here. Right? Only one can go in. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase this. So just go ahead and click this or surround select this and hit delete. And then we need to place a new node, a multiplier node. You can either go into the create and um, find your nodes uh, that way, or we can just hold down tab and press A real quick to get into our AI um, if it keeps Timing out, just go ahead and keep trying to hit tab and A. So AI multiply is the one that we're looking for. This is going to make it so that we can plug in both these and we can have one outsource. Um, so we have our wooden, uh, the 
wood wicker base color and we're going to plug that into input one and the ambient occlusion out color is going to input two see how our map has been affected it kind of had some shadows on it as opposed to if we didn't have that we just clicked on this um, you can remember what that looked like so now it has that outlined, it has some shadows in there that are just already placed in, even though there's no light affecting it. And we're going to go to out color and our base color. We have out color, um, new object. Um, so one thing that we haven't done is we need to make sure that all those nodes that we just dropped in here have that repeating texture. And what you can do is just go into this area and go ahead and set your repeating textures in. So that one's all good. Run to that node. That one's all good. This one's all good. This one still has one. And then press two. Um, just so that all of those are the same. And then if you still don't like the way your texture is repeating, maybe you want more floorboards if you're making a floor. Um, you can go ahead and just switch it from here and you just need to click on all these nodes and then you're in one place and not going in and out. Okay, so we have this. Now let's go ahead and boot up the renderer. Arnold, open the renderer. I think I got rid of my sky dome, so I'm just going to... Let's drop a physical sky or something this time. Arnold. So next I will be talking more about the, um, the height map. Um, this one necessarily wouldn't be much affected by it as it's just a more flat woven pattern. So I will, we're going to do another texture like this, but a flat one, and I'll talk more about that. So thanks, bye.